This is it folks, my gaming setup is finally ready for prime time, and my gaming desk is now fully complete. I am incredibly happy with how all of this has turned out, so let me show you around in its entirety. Let's start with the desk itself, which is 2 meters wide, and is actually a walnut worktop that's sitting upon three navy Alex drawers from, you guessed it, Ikea. It is perfect for what I need, as there's space for days, and the contrast of the dark wood with the navy drawers really does work a wonder. The extra width allows me to fit in my gigantic speakers, 35 inch monitor and custom called PC all on the desk without it feeling too cramped. Inside the drawers you'll find all of the bits and bobs that make this channel run with things like gaming mice, SSDs, processors, RAM, water cooling, the list definitely goes on. But let's talk about the belly of the beast, the most recent addition, this huge custom called PC that I'm gonna brand the Dominator. Now, okay, I did sort of steal this name from the Corsair RAM, but the name is definitely just. At the time of filming, this is one of the most powerful PCs that you can build, with Intel's 18-core 10980XE, overclocks to 4.6 GHz on all cores, an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti graphics card, and of course, the beautiful custom water-cooled loop. This green beast is put together with Corsair HydraX components, as it allows both the GPU and the CPU to run silently, even when applying some serious overclocking. I've made a video all about this PC, so hit the card in the top right corner of your screen to see how it was made, and of course check out its performance and thermals. A massive shout out to all of the manufacturers that have sent out the parts over the years, it is seriously appreciated. But a good PC is nothing without a proper gaming monitor, and the one we've got behind me is quite the beast. What you're looking at here is a huge 35 inch ultrawide with a resolution of 3440 by 1440 and a gigantic 200 hertz refresh rate. This makes games like Apex Legends look and feel buttery smooth and it's a true have your cake and eat it situation as the panel also provides the colour accuracy and contrast that makes them look incredible to boot. Now there is a little bit of a catch, unfortunately this uses a VA panel which while great in some regards, it does introduce a little bit of black smearing, especially when you're playing like very contrasty titles, but I think it's worth the trade-off, and to be honest, I haven't really thought about this in the last couple of months. But the main selling point of all of these G-Sync Ultimate displays is all about HDR, high dynamic range, as with 1000 nits of peak brightness and a proper zone dimming system, Playing games like Far Cry 5 is mesmerizing. You would not believe the difference if you saw this side by side with a normal ultra-wide display. It is incredibly epic. Next up, it's the speakers. And to be honest, these haven't really changed in years. I mean, why would they? If you get yourself a good set, they can last literally decades. So these are the Bowers and Wilkins 685 S2s and I've put the grills on them to make the set look a little bit different than last time, but underneath you'll find these bright yellow Kevlar cones that just sound incredible. They're definitely a tad on the bassier side, but as I game and listen to music on these things, I'd say it hits the right balance for me. And as they're somewhat accessible price-wise, these are speakers that are actually going to give you decent value for money, especially if you're going to be using them for years and years. Now it's time to move on to peripherals, but before we get started, a quick word from this video's sponsor. Blinkist. Blinkist is one of the coolest apps I've used in years, as it allows you to learn from thousands of non-fiction books in bite-sized, manageable chunks. Chances are you feel a little bit like me, where you just don't have enough time to read anymore, and this is exactly where Blinkist can help. Over 3,000 different books are available, and they come condensed into 15-minute segments. You can either read them, listen to them, or of course a mixture of both if you're feeling particularly fancy. This lets you learn from all of the very best books out there, all across a wide variety of topics, genres, and authors. I really enjoyed listening to what the most successful people do before breakfast, as I found this particularly motivating, and ironically, I could listen to it before breakfast. Join the 12 million active users today and access all Blinkist titles, even when you're offline, and get 65% off full length audiobooks. The first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash PC centric or the link down below are going to get unlimited access for one week to try out, and you'll also get 25% off the full membership price. The seven day trial is completely free and you can cancel at any time. So go check it out today with that link down below. Back to the setup though, and let's talk peripherals because I've definitely chopped and changed quite a lot over the last couple of months, but I've finally decided on a set that really works for me and that I would highly recommend. I've always been a huge advocate of wireless mice and I've been using the Logitech ones for quite a few years now. 
My current mouse of choice is Logitech's G Pro, as this is a light and nimble mouse that is absurdly responsive. This is the super sweet special edition ghost color that Logitech sent me out for some sponsored content a while back, but I was already using the black version beforehand anyway, and I just love this thing. If you want to know the big three upgrades that you can make to your setup that will make the most dramatic difference, then it's graphics cards, fast monitors, and of course, the gaming mouse. Now keyboard wise, I've been a little bit torn between two over the last few months. You've probably seen this if you've watched my videos and you've seen them sort of flipping between two, because I really do like Extrify's K4. This was a fantastic keyboard. It looks incredible when it comes in this really nice white color and it matched the mouse, but there's no media keys on it, which for most people probably isn't a big deal, but I listen to music all the time every single day and it was driving me mad, so I finally swapped to something else. Ladies and gentlemen, my current keyboard of choice is a Logitech's G915 10 keyless. Logitech sent this out for the 10 keyless versus full size video, and if you haven't seen that, you can find it in the top right corner of your screen. And sure enough, I've continued to use it ever since. It's wireless, fully mechanical, and super responsive, which makes it perfect for multiplayer gaming. And thanks to the tactile switches that I have on this model, it's excellent for the more mundane, worky tasks as well. Now I know that low profile switches may well be a controversial choice, I know that I definitely would have been surprised myself if I'd sort of guessed I was going to be doing this before trying them out, but something about the feel and then that smaller travel distance just makes gaming more comfortable, even if it is a little bit less solid to the touch. Now as far as the mouse pad is concerned, I don't really have any special allegiance to any. The one I've got in my setup at the moment is from Corsair, this is one of their larger extended ones. I'll leave it linked down in the description below along with links to everything in the setup if you're interested. But my advice would be to get one that is super sized as it looks nicer, it gives you a little bit more space to actually move about on. But if you get yourself one that's decent, is high quality, it's going to last you for years. You can even put them in washing machines and they come out alright. I've done it, trust me. Maybe you shouldn't, I don't want you to ruin your mouse pad. Put it in a pillowcase, that's what I did. Disclaimer, your mouse pad may not go in the washing machine. Especially if it's RGB, that would be a bad idea. My headset of choice at the moment is really quite old. It's Razer's Man of War. Purely just because it sounds great, it's super comfortable, and it has a decent enough microphone quality that you can use it in chat without running into any issues. People weren't quite so convinced by its durability. Spoiler alert, don't sit on your headset, bad things will happen. And whether it is for this reason or another, it's since been discontinued and replaced with the now current Nari headset. So if you want to grab one that's similar to mine, I'd point you towards that instead. All of the lighting in this room is powered by both Philips Hue, LifeX, and then this pretty cool neon sign, and you can find the video of that in the top right hand corner of your screen. It's awesome, I've bought so many bulbs over the years, and getting yourself a good lamp or two is a must for real impactful mood lighting. And all of mine were actually found on Amazon, and Philips recently sent out a whole load of RGB bulbs that populates every single light fitting in this place, much appreciated. But way more interestingly, they also sent out some Philips Hue play bars and then the lighting strips that create the purpley greeny hue that you've seen in countless videos. And when you combine this with a very sweet little desktop app, you can then sync it with your games or music for your very own one man rave up. And I don't know whether this is something I should be admitting, I do get lonely sometimes and I don't know, the subtle tones of RGB always cheer me up. I'm so cool. You can of course control all of these lights with just your voice, thanks to Google Home Mini, and this sits at the back of my desk and it makes things just far far easier. Even the PC centric neon sign that I've just installed on the wall is actually controllable with a smart plug, and thus you can use your voice. But my favourite bit of tech that actually sits on this desk that I always recommend for people's PC gaming setups isn't necessarily what you'd expect, it's Elgato Stream Deck Mini. And I think this is a little bit confusing for a lot of people because it's called the Stream Deck. It sounds as if it's only going to be useful for streaming, which, don't get me wrong, it really is. But in actual fact, just for everybody as a PC gamer, day to day, for doing things quickly, it is a real godsend. At the basic level, I use this to toggle on a frame rate counter and then start recording game footage without ever leaving the game. But I've got it paired to turn on the lights to different themes, control my actual studio lights, and then swap my game audio from the headset to the speakers with just a tap. The possibilities really are quite endless. This is a super neat little gadget. 
And so, there you go then, the PC-centric setup 2020. And yes, I know, I'm sure this will continue to evolve and change over time, so make sure you subscribe to see all of the updates as they come and go. As always, you can find the Amazon affiliate links to everything featured down in that description below if you do want more information or, of course, current pricing. Don't forget to smash that like button. It honestly helps out so much you really wouldn't believe. As I say, do get subscribed for more videos just like this. Go and check out PC Centric on both Twitter and Instagram if you want to see behind the scenes. Ask me any questions. I'm always active, so yeah, let me know your thoughts but thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.